two Saturdays, two Saturdays ago, I joined the Servants of the Cross Sisters. They organized a, a street evangelization. So I was partnered with another a parishioner of St. Mary's, and we got the sense that uh, God is call, go, calling us to go to a park to evangelize there. And my partner uh, thought that I think it would be a good idea for, for us to bring a frisbee as a props, okay? So we went to the park, we were playing frisbees there, and I was like really enjoying it. It was great weather uh, two Saturdays ago. And then um, several children joined us to play frisbee. Said, oh my, how could we now evangelize if we're just gonna play frisbee with these kids, right? <laughs> but the Lord provided. The Lord provided for me to be able to talk to the mother of the, some of the children there. And the, the, the mother asked me, oh, do you have any children? And I was like tempted to say, I have many children. <laughs> you do call me father, right? So all of you are my spiritual children. But I didn't say that. I said, well, I'm a Catholic priest. And when I said that, she just felt a little uncomfortable, okay? And, and then I saw a, 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 a tattoo cross on her forearm. So I just asked her, what's the significance of that cross, the tattoo on your forearm? And again, she felt a little uncomfortable. And she was telling me that she used to be a believer. She, she was a Pentecostal. She would go to church. But because of marriage problems, financial problems, uh, health problems of one of her sons, she just stopped going to church. She just got discouraged with everything. And so I told her, you know, there's no judgment here. There's no judgment. The Lord meets you where you're at. Okay? And then I just started telling her that I do believe that God continues to heal even today. So I asked her, do you want me to pray for your son? Seven-year-old, beautiful child, like very active. She has he has brain tumor and would experience seizure. Okay? So I asked him, do you want me to pray for your son? And she said, yes. So I, I, I prayed. I, 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 I release the presence of Jesus upon this beautiful child, and I command in the most powerful name of Jesus, and I commanded for the brain tumor to dissolve. Because I've heard of testimonies of brain tumors dissolving. So I know Jesus could do that. Right? So I prayed, and after praying, I said, okay, now go to your doctor, have your child tested if there's still brain tumor. And how... And, and I'm sure it would be so amazing, right? If the Lord heals this child of this brain tumor and seizure. But I was also praying that they would encounter Jesus in a more personal way. That they would know that Jesus is journeying with them despite the many struggles that they were going through. That they would know that Jesus loves them and they would start to believe in Him again and start practicing their faith. The reason why I share this because it has to do with our gospel today. To, to the disciples of Jesus, they were so discouraged, so devastated, so disillusioned because Jesus, who, who claims to be the Son of God, was crucified and died. They were hoping that Jesus would redeem Israel from the Roman Empire. And, and they, they heard reports. They heard the reports of women who went to the tomb and saw a vision of these angels saying that he has risen from the dead. They themselves went to the tomb and saw that the tomb was empty. And because of that, they did not believe. And maybe the reason why they were going to Emmaus is because they gave up their faith. They're leaving Jerusalem to go to, to Emmaus. You know, it's, like, it's like all of us, right? We're all on this journey. And we experience trials, difficulties, sufferings, pains in life. And there are times when we ask God, like, where are you? Why did you allow this to happen in my life, in my family? Do you have those questions? 
when you're going through trials and difficulties in life, right? Yes? I, I do have those questions. And when we're going through pain, suffering in life, what do we do? We turn to things. We turn to food, shopping, alcohol, pornography, entertainment, so, so, you know, sports. We self-medicate so that we would not experience the pain. And, be, and when we got absorbed, so absorbed with that, we don't recognize that Jesus continues to journey with us. We don't see Him. We don't feel His presence because we're so absorbed with what is going on with our life. The truth is that Jesus is joining with us. And three things He would do. The first one is that Jesus seeks us. Okay? It says in Scripture, Jesus Himself came up and walked along with them. Jesus initiated the encounter. It's not the two disciples. It was Jesus. Okay? So it's the same with us. Jesus is the one who seeks us more than we seek Him. It's like the lost sheep, right? The lost sheep, <laughs> they couldn't find a good shepherd. They're lost. It's the good shepherd who is seeking the lost sheep. And we're all lost sheep here. All we have to do is to be found by the good shepherd. He seeks us. He initiates the encounter. And he meets us where we're at. No judgment. No condemnation. Okay? The second thing Jesus uh, would do is that Jesus reveals himself through the truths of his word. Okay? We don't know what specific passages that Jesus used to explain to these two disciples. All we know that he opened to them the scripture. He, he was showing to them the fulfillment of the Old Testament law and prophecies points to him. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament law and prophecies. And when Jesus revealed himself to them, they said, were not our hearts burning while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? The question that we have to ask ourselves is that, do we read the Bible? Do we read scripture every day? I tell you, if you just read two minutes, two minutes of scripture, and reading scripture is not just reading any novel or whatever, right? So that you will have knowledge. No. You ask the Holy Spirit, you ask Jesus to reveal himself to us as we read scripture. And scripture is so beautiful. You know, if, if you want, you uh, join uh, Father Mike Smith's this Bible in a year. It's so beautiful. It's the scripture, the great drama of life is there. And just like any drama, there's a plot. And the plot is that there's a battle between good and evil. And the battleground is our soul. Okay? Jesus wants to reveal himself to us, his love for us, his mercy for us. He wants to reveal his plan of salvation, of how we can be saved. Okay? The third thing that Jesus wants to do is that Jesus would want to open our eyes. Okay? In the gospel, he says there, he sat at the table, took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And they remembered. They remembered what Jesus did at the Last Supper. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. I was asking, why didn't Jesus open their eyes? Well, they were on their way to Emmaus. Why in that, in that table when he was like breaking the bread with them? Why? And I think it's because Jesus doesn't want them just for them to know that he has risen. He also wants them that he wants to have this intimate relationship with them. Okay? And that's what breaking of the bread is, right? It's like, for you, 
when you invite somebody, you don't just invite anybody to go to your place for supper. You invite somebody that you want to get to know and for them to get to know you better so that you would grow in intimacy. And that's what the Lord wants. Okay? Not just for, for, for us to know that He has risen, that He wants, but also that He wants to have this intimacy with us. What happened there on the road to Emmaus is, what, is what's happening in our liturgy today. In the liturgy of the Word, the Lord is revealing Himself to us. And I hope when we hear His words, our hearts would burn. Burn for love for Him. So that we would be properly disposed to receive Him as we celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist. In John 15, verse 15, Jesus says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Masters, they don't eat with their servants on the table. Right? That's why Jesus has called us friends. We're no longer servants. We're invited into this banquet, into this meal, because we are his friends. He wants to reveal Himself to us for us to, believe, to, to grow in that intimacy with Him. John 15, verse 13, it says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is not just talking the talk. Jesus is walking the talk. Because what happened there, what ha happened there in the Last Supper, right? He, he broke the bread. It points to his breaking of his body on the cross. When he transformed the wine to his blood, it points to him pouring out his blood for us as a sign of his love for each and every one of us. Are our eyes open? Do we have eyes to see that Jesus is present here do we have eyes to see how much Jesus loves us so that we would believe and follow him as disciples? Because Jesus said, it is only those who would believe that they would have eternal life. That, that's the reason why Jesus instituted this Eucharist. This is the greatest sign of his love for each and every one of us. Because the Eucharist, is the unbloody, unbloody representation of what He did on Good Friday for each and every one of us. Do we have eyes to see? Are our eyes open? Do we see Him present here? Do we recognize Him? Do we believe in His love? Just as this, this woman, Jesus encountered this woman at the park through me. And he wants to journey with this woman and her family to show his love. He is also journeying with us. He seeks us. He initiates the encounter. He meets us where we're at. No judgment, no condemnation. He wants to reveal himself to us through Scripture, how much he loves us. And he wants to open our eyes so that we will be able to see that He is truly present in our life, in the Eucharist, in our life, joining with us, and how much He loves us, so that we would believe. Because what happened here is the foreshadowing of what we will experience in heaven. In heaven, there will be a heavenly banquet. In heaven, we would enjoy that intimacy forever. Mm -hmm.